What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. As always, so glad to have you lovely folks back on the channel. On today's episode, I'll be giving you guys my foolproof guide on how to evaluate a fashion prototype coming from an overseas manufacturer. So if you've been getting into the fashion business for a while, most likely you will have dealt with a manufacturer or two, and you may have gotten your fair share of horrible samples. And the struggle is, what is the industry standard? What are we looking for as designers to be able to evaluate whether A, this is a quality garment, have we received what we asked for? And B, is this a manufacturer that we wish to work with? What I'm going to be doing today is taking a bunch of samples that I have right here and evaluating them for your purposes, for the purpose of evaluating, is this a good sample or a bad sample? What do I look for? What do I look for in the fabric? What do I look for in the printing? What do I look for in the trims? What do I look for in the finishing? So that's what we're gonna do. So without further ado, let's get right into the episode. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You are looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights. Camera. Action. We'll get right into the episode and we'll evaluate a sample that I've received and what I personally look for in this sample. The first thing that you're going to notice is most samples that you're going to receive are going to be in a very and fairly standard colorway, whether that's black, whether that's white, whether that's gray. It's basically the factory using your composition or your specified composition and using an available fabric that they have in mind. If you look at a factory, more likely than not, they're not going to have your custom dyed fabric on hand in the correct composition, in the correct weight. So your initial fabric is going to be received in black, white, gray, whatever they have on hand. Rest assured, this is not necessarily a bad sign. So what I look for? Well, the first thing that I'm going to look for is the hand feel of the fabric. Does it feel similar to what I had in mind? So if the fabric that I had in mind had to be a cotton plush fabric, something with a smooth peachy finish, but I receive something that's overly slick and they tell me that this is cotton or that they tell me that this is a natural fiber, I know there is something wrong here. So I need to be able to use my senses in order to evaluate the fabric from a hand feel perspective. Does it wrinkle too much? Is it overly stretchy? Is it not stretchy enough? I need to be able to compare what I've specified in my tech pack to what I've received in real life. Is the weight too little? If I've specified an ultra heavyweight and the factory has told me this is a heavyweight fabric, but I receive something that is maybe half the density or half the thickness, then this gives me an idea as to the integrity of the manufacturer that I'm operating with. Another thing is you need to look at the color. How is the color being represented on the fabric? At this stage, if the factory is unable to send you a proper colored garment. So that is to say that the color that is being dyed on the fabric is not evenly distributed. There's blotches, there's weird smudges, there's weird chemical artifacting. Again, this is not a good indicator as to the quality of the sample. These are all small things that we can see. If it's black, it should look beautifully black. It should also be consistent. One thing that I see some manufacturers do is, let's just say I have a main body fabric that is a woven fabric, and then I have a waistband that is a rib waistband. If I have too much of a color difference between the main body fabric and the rib waistband, even though they're both black, but they're different shades of black. This could again be an a indicator to the attention to detail that a manufacturer is providing. If this is not something they explicitly call out, again, you may want to be very, very cautious about that manufacturer. Make sure everything is consistent. The second thing that I'm going to look at is the quality of the stitching. This is very important because where you join two panels together, you're going to get a fold line. The way that the fold is not only cut, but also stitched down is a great indicator of the quality of the garment. The, per the areas that I'm gonna look at are the hemline. So I will drag my, th my index finger along the thumbnail, making sure that there's not a tremendous amount of loose threads. I'll also look very closely at where the hemline is cut and it's folded in, and I'll make sure that with the finishing, there's not a jagged edge that is sticking out underneath it. A poorly finished garment, you're going to see where that cut was, where the finishing of the garment was, and they're not going to have aligned the stitch correctly with the raw edge or the hemline finish. This is also another indicator of a poorly constructed sample, which does not bode well for the future. Other areas that you definitely want to look at are the waistband. So where the actual waistband inserts into the main body garment. How thick or how consistent is the finishing? Are the threads used high quality? Are they dense enough? 
when you stretch them, do they completely rip in the first example of stress? These are all indicators of, again, a poorly finished garment. Another thing that you definitely want to notice is the seam density. How many stitches per inch are they using? The less stitches per inch, the less dense the seam, the less high quality the garment. Think of this, the more dense the seam work, the higher quality and the more effort, the more money has been poured into making sure that this seam is robust. As a rule of thumb, you want to go for at least 8 to 12 SPI. This stands for stitches per inch. From there, you want to make sure that you can stretch the seam. Stretch the seam in a horizontal and in a vertical fashion. Of course, the level of performance that you're going to get is going to be highly dependent on the fabric that you have. If you have a low stretch fabric, then you're going to need a more robust seam in order to do in order to bear that durability. The stretchiness of the fabric will be able to absorb the stretch if you have a stretchier fabric. But if you have a more rigid fabric, then here, more robust seamwork is going to be much, much more important. So do a horizontal stretch, do a vertical stretch. As a rule of thumb, when it comes to leggings, the stretchability of the seam and the ability to bear that stretch is going to be ever more important. So here, you'll want to do a horizontal stretch along the longitudinal axis of the seam and make sure that it can withstand at least 1.5 to 2 extra stretch without ripping completely. Now we've talked about the seam work, we've talked about the stitches that are used, we've even, and we should even consider the way that these stitches, so the way that they're dyed and how that color matches to the garment itself. If there's a great or stark contrast, between the yarn used and the color that is dyed into that yarn and the self body fabric, then again, that's an indicator of a low attention to detail from the factory. Next, we wanna look at the detailing of the garment. The prints used, the trims used, how is the garment ornamented? When it comes to the prints, you need to make sure of a couple things. If it's a white heat transfer print, well, give it a basic level of stretch you need to be able to make sure that it can withstand even the most moderate uses. You don't want something that you can peel off just simply by picking at it very, very simply. This is not going to bode well over time and definitely once it's washed, it's definitely not going to last. Another thing is make sure that the arrangement, how the prints are aligned, how their position is correct. If you have something on the back center waistband, make sure that it's centered. Make sure that it's not skewed. Make sure that it's not stretched, that they haven't warped your logo, that they haven't sheared your logo. Also, make sure that everything is as indicated in your tech pack here. If you've indicated an embroidery finish, but they're providing you with a heat transfer print and they're not giving you a reason for that, that is an indication of either they haven't checked the tech pack itself or they're trying to get one over you or they're just simply not that attentive to the detailing of the garment. Make sure that any zippers that you have are done correctly. So this is going to be, again, an indicator of a low quality garment or a high quality garment. When it comes to your drawstrings, make sure that the quality that you requested is on par with what your vision is. You don't want a drawstring that is too thick, too thin, the material is cheap, or it's coming undone, or it's fraying, or even the aglet. Again, if you've specified a metal aglet and they give you a plastic aglet without any sort of indication as to why, that could be an indicator. Give a aglet a little bit of a tug. If it comes undone very easily, Again, this is not going to be a great indicator that this is going to last long term. Look at these zippers. What types of zippers have they used? Are they YKK zippers? Are they SPZ zippers? Are they high quality zippers that are going to withstand general wear and tear over time? Give them a couple tugs. Go once, twice, three times, four times. If you notice un any unnecessary snagging or the teeth break just by simple use, again, this is not the best indicator. Look at your printing as well. Make sure that the color of the printing matches as what you've indicated. These are all subtle details that give you an overall indication of quality and feel. One thing I want to note now is going to be the fit. Fit is important, especially when it comes to how your garment is going to represent. Quality and fit are correlated, especially when evaluating the performance of a factory. If you've taken the time and you've taken the due diligence to go ahead and provide a fit reference, make sure that your fit has been duplicated within tolerance. So your out seam should be within plus minus 0.5 inches. Your waistband width should be within 0.25. Make sure that everything is as indicated. If there's a stark contrast between the fit requested and what you're ultimately getting, then this is not an indicator of the best attention to detail from your factory, which is a poor quality fabric and a poor quality garment. The last thing that I want to mention, and this is something that you really wouldn't know to look for, and it's a very nuanced and detail-oriented 
aspect of the sample that you can really use to see if you're working with a factory that is a high quality factory or it's a really low quality factory because it's something that you wouldn't know unless you've experienced it before but this has to do with the direction of the grain line when you look at a garment especially if it's a knitted garment what you'll notice are going to be these vertical lines that represent the knit structure of the garment this is called the bias line or the grain line itself on your torso portion you'll always have your grain line going up and down this has to do with the natural direction of the fabric and how it's cut on the pattern on the sleeve, what you'll want to notice is the grain line itself should be perpendicular to the edge or parallel to the edge or the fold line of the sleeve. When you put your sleeve horizontal like this, your grain line should also be going perfectly horizontal. Failure to do that could be an indication that the factory is trying to cut costs. Why is this? When we cut our cut and sew patterns, what we have is a big piece of fabric. And the way that we arrange our patterns on that fabric is an indicator of is the fact you're willing to pay a little bit more to get a higher quality garment. If they try to squeeze in all of the patterns that they can and put them all between each other in these small crevices in these small places, what will happen is you will not get a perfectly aligned grain line on the sleeves and the collar. You'll get an angled grain line. This is something we definitely see a lot when it comes to fast fashion like H&M, Zara, all of these fast fashion stores that we see, just notice the grain line, how it reacts. You don't want the grain line to be contrary to anything but a perfectly parallel or perfectly perpendicular structure. You don't want something to be on an angle. You don't want it to be flipped. You wanna make sure that the fabric is always right side up and failure to do so is actually going to cause the garment to react poorly because knitted fabrics have a natural direction of stretch. They'll typically stretch much better in their vertical direction than in their horizontal direction. So the second I take this and I twist it, what I'm doing is I am lessening the effectiveness and the stretchability of the fabric at the cost or because I'm trying to cut a corner and trying to save some cost, and trying to cram in as many fabric pieces or pattern pieces as I can within the same square area of fabric. Well, as that's it. That's a quick recap on what I personally look for when it comes to sample evaluation how I go through my samples, how I go through them step by step. Do I make sure with the actual fabric that's being used? Is it on par with what I've requested? Am I looking at the prints in a way that makes sense? Are they high quality? Are they durable? If I, if I wash them a couple times, if I apply a little bit of friction onto them, do they completely come undone? The stitching quality, is it finished correctly? When the hems are cut, are, do we have frayed edges everywhere? Or do we have just unsightly finishes that are just tucked in and we hope that the customer never sees them? These are all strong indications of poor quality workmanship and poor quality attention to detail. That's not something that you want to work with. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, I know it was a little bit more technical. Let me know in the comments below what other similar production style technical episodes you want to see in the future. Also a fresh announcement, but we have a exclusive membership section to the Fit Design TV YouTube channel. We have three key tiers, all with a ton of great perks. You can check the community section in our channel and you can see what each of these three tiers has. Also, I get this question a lot, but if you're curious, you want me to review a sample that you've made with a manufacturer, whether it's from Alibaba or wherever it is, you want me to, you want me to give you my opinion so that before you go in and commit thousands of dollars to a production run, you can get my opinion to make sure that this is good or is this not good? Well, you can check the link in the description. I offer one-on-one -on -one personalized consultation calls and I have limited slots, but I'd be more than happy to evaluate a fabric or a sample with you or any other topic that you want to discuss. Guys, from the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.